So most people don't realise that a bunion is actually a dislocating joint. And I often say to people when they, they're quite distressed about the pain that it's causing, and I try to keep it in perspective for them and say, well, you can imagine if you were dislocated your thumb bone and then you hammered your thumb against a counter for 1,200 up to 10,000 steps per day, you probably wouldn't be surprised that it hurts. So what happens with this joint is it's got a muscle that pulls directly behind and a muscle that pulls directly in front and they hold that joint in alignment. When we have any pressures that push our toes over, unfortunately that can mean that that pull of muscle will become off centre and start to pull that toe towards the other toes. And eventually it can get so bad that this toe will actually be pulled all the way over and start to underride the other toes alongside it. Bunions are actually incredibly common. For people 65 and under, we're getting a roughly a quarter of people will have bunions, but it increases as you get over 65. So once you're over 65, we're seeing over a third of the population with bunions. Two out of three are female. One of the major factors behind them is the shoes that we wear. So when we think about shoes, and women's shoes compared to men's shoes have always been a little bit more of a tighter fit and generally more of a pointy toe. As a podiatrist, I have to be honest and say I've never seen a foot shape quite this pointy, but you can imagine that if you're squishing your toes into a toe box that is this narrow and this sharp, you're going to be pushing that big toe over and assisting those muscles from coming out of alignment and help dislocate that joint. If you have a look in your family and you know that you are genetically prone, so often, you know, thinking on the female side, if you look at your mother or your, your grandmother on the female side, if they had bunions, then chances are it may be in your future. So what we say to people, if you are genetically prone, then try and be a bit proactive. And I know it's difficult when you're in your 20s, but try to limit at least the height of the heel that you're wearing and the pointiness. So wearing good shoes is always going to be our first port of call. The second one is sometimes if you are hypermobile, having something that helps stabilise your foot inside your shoe. So either a shoe with a very good arch support already in it, or an orthosis or a foot orthotic from a podiatrist or a like. And last but not least is foot exercises. So I have quite a few young girls that have been dancers and unfortunately they are developing bunions. So we spend quite a bit of time with them just going through some gentle exercises to maintain the motion in both ways of their big toe. So unfortunately, once the damage has been done or you've started to develop a bunion, reversing it doesn't seem possible conservatively. So the best that we can do is slow the development down or cease the development of the bunion further. So if you're developing a bunion, please go and see someone as soon as you realise because that's the best that we're going to be able to keep your foot at.